Governance, the framework that you use to create and manage policies, has been expanded and improved to include additional delivered lifecycle events, actions, and enhanced options to run custom actions. Starting with Image 18, this framework is now rebranded as Orchestration Manager. When you create a policy for an environment, you can now choose from several new lifecycle events, including Add Node, Backup, Clone, Delete, Infrastructure CPU, People Tools Patch, People Tools Upgrade, Provisioning, Remove Node, Restore, Start, and Stop. After you select an event, you can also choose New Policy Actions, Health Check, and Send Email Notification. The Custom Action selection builds on the Invoke Handler action from the previous release. Now, in addition to using people code for a custom action, you can also select either a custom script or custom DPK in the repository file dropdown that has been uploaded from your local device, a Git repository, or OCI object store to the Cloud Manager repository. You can also enter inline commands directly on the Policy Action Parameters dialog box. The next section of this video discusses the use of custom actions in other areas of Cloud Manager. You can use a custom action as one of the multiple actions in a policy. Health Check verifies that the domains are up and running, PIA is accessible, and the load balancer is up. The Send Email Notification action requires that notifications be turned on and that a notification OCID is set. This policy runs a custom action, performs a health check, and sends an email notification with the Environment Health Check status report. You can also choose to run a policy on a schedule, as in this example, which performs a health check on an environment and then sends an email with the Environment Health Check status report. Policies for Repository Artifact offer new policy actions Backup, Start, Stop, Send Email Notification, and health check. For repository artifact policies, you must position the send email notification action after another action. This example combines several policy actions for a repository artifact. This policy is based on the download of the infrastructure CPU for PeopleTools 861 to the repository. The policy stops and backs up the environment, starts it, applies CPU patches, and then sends an email notification to the user with the information that the previous action to apply CPU patches is completed. It then does a health check and sends another email notification with the Environment Health Check status report. Using Orchestration Manager, you can also create a policy to keep your PeopleSoft 861-based update images always current and synchronized with your target environments. The self-managed PUM policy requires the policy actions Provision PUM and Migrate PUM metadata. You can also add optional policy actions Define and Upload Target, Delete Old PUM Source, and Define a Custom Action to configure a load balancer on the PUM Source. This completes our demonstration of the Orchestration Manager feature. This release of Cloud Manager supports diverse deployment architectures. You can incorporate highly customized deployment steps, such as creating additional websites, managing custom web server artifacts to support branding, and so on. You can seamlessly configure and add your customized environment automation into the Cloud Manager provisioning process. You can upload files containing custom deployment scripts from your local storage, object storage, or from a public or private Git repository. The supported Git platforms are GitLab and GitHub. You can upload scripts to be used by Cloud Manager, written in Bash, PowerShell, and Python. You can also upload a zip file containing customer DPK code that will be executed during environment provisioning to perform customized deployment tasks. After you've uploaded custom scripts, they need to be configured for environment provisioning. Use the new fields Cloud init command, Puppet customization, 
and custom puppet script to run scripts in the PeopleSoft application deployment and configuration flow. The custom puppet script uses a custom DPK to automate the diverse architecture requirements. Cloud init is the industry standard method for cloud infrastructure initialization. The cloud init command field allows you to enter your own cloud init commands to be run. You can use these commands for installing packages while creating the virtual machines or for enabling or disabling services. You can enter the OS level commands like package installation or OS update that you need to customize when creating your infrastructure. The commands or statements must be separated by semicolons. In the custom puppet script field, you can select the file that includes the custom DPK. Select an uploaded script to run prior to provisioning the environment. You can also select an uploaded script to run post-provisioning. The pre- and post-provisioning script can access environment variables that contain configuration information used to deploy the environment. Enter DPK customization values or custom environment variables in the forms of YAML, which can be accessed in custom puppet script as well as the pre- and post-provision scripts. This completes our demonstration of the Support for Diverse Deployment Architectures feature. You can now control the access to environments using roles and environment tags. Use the Cloud Manager Settings tile to configure this option on the role-based security page. You can assign environments that are logically grouped using environment tags to a specific role and assign environment action permissions. This significantly improves the Environment Access Administrator in comparison to prior releases where you had to set permissions and delegate access at an individual environment level. This modifies the existing functionality that allowed Cloud Manager administrators to delegate access based on tag namespace, tag value, and tag key to also consider the role of users. This significantly reduces the need to manage environment permissions and delegation at an individual environment level. If you want to prevent a user from performing an action using the role-based access feature, you can create a new non-administrator user and a new role. Map the environment tag of the production environment to the new role. Assign all the environment permissions except for delete permission to the new role. This creates a non-admin user who has all privileges except for delete action on production environments. This completes the tag-based environment access control feature description. This image adds support for para-virtualized block volume attachments in addition to the existing support for iSCSI. An iSCSI block volume attachment is based on the TCP IP protocol used for communication between a volume and attached instance. Para-virtualized volume attachments are block volumes that have native operating system support and don't need an iSCSI initiator and attachment. Para-virtualized volume attachments are supported for virtual machine instances only. When you use para-virtualized block volumes for your instances, you avoid the need for the extra commands required to configure iSCSI attachments. Support for para-virtualized block volume attachments will benefit government cloud customers and Oracle U.S. Defense Cloud regions, which don't support iSCSI attachments. This enhancement also enables them to use Cloud Manager. On the other hand, iSCSI attached block volumes tend to give better input and output performance. You can choose para-virtualized or iSCSI volume attachment type when configuring the Resource Manager stack for installing Cloud Manager, when adding or modifying a node to a topology definition, or when adding a node in an existing environment. This completes the support for para-virtualized block volume attachment feature description. We've only shown you the highlights of this Cloud Manager update. For more information and other enhancements, see the CFO tool, the image overview on My Oracle Support, 
and go to the PeopleSoft Information Portal for updates.